So the 1742 coat is almost finished. Um, plastrons are stitched down, buttons are on, um, cuff has been stab stitched, whip stitched here. Um, the I've done the buttonholes on the front. I've got one more to do and I've just got to catch the sleeves down, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, it's been stitched down the front and down the hem and the center back. The, sleeve, the lining is all hand sewn in. Um, these have been stitched together, they've been whipped together. And what happens, because I've whipped it in the red like that, when it lays flat, you see the red on the outside. They're quite big stitches, but um, they're quite strong as well. So I think that's okay. And it flattens out basically by doing that. Um, so I will press it before I send it off. Um, but that's the the side seams, skirt side seams. Um, the armhole, I've because the sleeves aren't lined, I've whip stitched the um, lining which frays around the uh, the sleeve head. Not sure whether I've done this correctly because what happens is I've pushed all the seam allowance of the broadcloth into the body, which means that when you look at the coat from the outside, the sleeve seam allowance is all going this way, whereas normally the seam allowance would be going that way. Um, however, I don't know whether this is right or wrong. Hindsight, I could have left the sleeve seam allowance sticking out, um, or I could have left both seam allowances sticking out, um, and just finish the lining like this. But I don't don't know what's right and wrong with that really. Um, but that's where we're at with it. And then it gave me the neatest finish basically. Um, and then the only other thing, two things I need to do. I'm just going to turn this sleeve inside out. So what I did was I herring boned the cuff facing up into the sleeve, not really thinking about it because, and I used quite a big stitch, and not really thinking about it because I'd normally line a sleeve. Um, but this is just going to catch, and I've actually pulled some out already. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back around and just whip stitch that down. Um, so that's one thing I've got to do on the coat on both sides. And then the last thing I need to talk to you about is the buttonholes. So hand sewed the buttonholes. On the front um, turn back facing, I've used yellow. Um, so I've hand done those, but unfortunately it means that yellow shows on the wrong side. Um, but that's how it is basically. Um, and I'm guessing that's how they would have been originally. I think they were worn mainly like this and then they were closed across the body for warmth. Um, so I don't think they, I think they were more worn like this than closed basically and then these three buttons down here I've done equal distance so they're all about two and a half inches apart um, and I've done these in red and I've just got one last one to do which I'll show you how to in a moment but obviously because this is red thread it shows on the yellow but that's never going to be turned back um, and then I've got to put some buttons over here and they did up apparently I think there's a the practical side of how this coat is worn I'm not entirely convinced about but um, you know it's it's what the images are telling me, um, you know, historical material as well as other recreations people have done. So um, I've gone with it. Um, I've got, I've set it so that on this side you have got enough fabric for an overlap. Um, and then at the top on the neck edge, those two just meet. Um, so that's on centre front, whereas centre front is actually here, down the bottom. Um, in hindsight also, I would have shaped this further out here. Um, can't do anything about that now so i'm going to show you how to do the button and then um how i'm going to whip stitch the cuff up and then we're all done okay so for the last button hole um i've got red thread and i've got a quadruple thread so two lots of two um and i've waxed it so i've used beeswax as you can see what i've done is i've just slid the thread through and then i've um put it under the iron just to seal it and smooth it out I'll show you that in another video, um, but it's, as you can see, it's a very long piece of thread, okay, because you're not using quite a lot of thread to do this, but it is just standard thread, it's strong thread, it's good quality, um, I'll put the make in the box below, um, and basically I'm just going to do the buttonhole using this thread, so to start off with, I've marked each end of my buttonhole with chalk pencil, if you need to draw a line, draw a line as well. Um, and then I'm using a really sharp unpicker going in at that end and then just pushing it along 
until I get nearly to the end and um, because I don't trust on pickers because you you push hard and then it'll go really quickly sometimes and just cut that last bit with my scissors and then I'm going to go back and just cut that end as well with my scissors because I know they're nice and sharp okay and I've gone through both layers now if you want to at this stage what you could do is run a few stitches around to hold it together um, with the broadcloth it's it stays so cut well cut um, I haven't bothered doing that I haven't felt the need and what it also means is that I can get my needle in between the two layers so I bring my needle up through between the two layers and but because of that it means I don't have to have any ends sticking out anywhere so I'm just going to tuck those ends of thread inside between the two layers of fabric like that and then I'm just going to do a stitch going across first of all just to hold it and then I start my buttonhole I had hoped after doing as many buttonholes as I've done on the coat and I've also buttonholed and buttonholed um, the waistcoat um, I thought and hoped my buttonholing skills would have improved greatly um, I would say they're possibly better than they were but it, they're not fantastic um, I don't think it's a skill that I'm particularly suited to um, but that's why somebody invented a buttonhole machine um, I wouldn't normally do these by hand it's just that this is a, a period where they would have been um, done by hand and the client is expecting hand finishing so um, usually I use a buttonhole machine which is a a lot quicker and B um, a lot neater a lot more uniform
okay not necessarily the most interesting viewing you've ever had but there you go there's the buttonhole um and i would say actually that's been the one that has worked the best um as you can see it's, it's red on the other side um and it's not perfect because these stitches really should all be uniform and close together but that's what we've got um anyway just do a last last couple of stitch just to hold the thread and then because this is broadcloth it's lovely and thick pushing my needle through making sure i'm not going through to the yellow um so I come out in a random spot and pull it quite tight and then just cut the thread and then the ends will disappear into the into the coat okay so that's my last buttonhole so i'm gonna um just pin round to hold it in place and then I can remove my herringbone stitch okay I'm going to use double thread um, and I'm going to use red although I'm sewing it will be seen on the yellow and it'll be sewn on the yellow um, the reason I'm using red is because if I do go too deep with my stitches um, the main side of the coat is red um, so it won't be seen but it won't be as noticeable as if I did it in yellow. So, a hand inside, and as with slip stitch, just work round, always working away from you. Okay, so I'm going to do that on both sleeves. And then the last thing, I keep saying this is the last thing and then finding other things, but literally the last thing is to sew on um, three buttons or four buttons um, on the waist and on the neck and then do the other side of the, the other sleeve and then it is completely done. So I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. Um, could have done things differently in places but it's been a real learning curve um good says that this is incredibly heavy this coat now um because the broadcloth is so dense it's so heavy okay so triple thread and although the back is yellow I'm sewing these in red and I'm using about 22 millimeter pewter, flat pewter button
Oh, and the last thing I've done is I've caught the corners together with a few little stitches just to hold them as turn backs. Not sure that's what they did. Probably hooks and bars actually. I wasn't surprised when you hook hooks and bars, so that's what I've done. Um, and that is the coat complete. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, it's been a learning curve for me, definitely. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed joining me on this process.